I am going to hurt you, and I'm going to hurt you worse than you hurt me. We, as Christians, those who are Christ-like, those whose behavior and heart reflect Jesus Christ, must remember that we are not of this world, so we cannot act like those in it. Be transformed, as I stated earlier, means to be changed completely in appearance or character. So, how are we transformed? By the renewing of our mind. So what does it mean to renew one's mind? Renew means to replace. So renewing your mind means replacing the old way of thinking with a new way of thinking. So when we hear renew your mind by the washing of the word or renew your mind with the word of God, it means to replace old ways of thinking with what the Bible says, what God says. How do we prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? By demonstrating God's will through our lives. Show others that God is good, acceptable, and perfect through our transformed character, our behavior. We cannot do this if we don't know what God's will is. And we can only know what God's will is by knowing what the Bible says and by having a relationship with him. So, what does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all, all things are become new. If your old way of thinking has you stuck in the past... I messed up. I am no good. I am a failure. I will never accomplish anything. Why was I ever born? Or have no, I have no purpose. When you accept Christ and allow him to enter your heart, you must replace that old way of thinking with, I am a new creature. All the old things I did have passed away, and all things are new. Do not allow the devil to use others to bring doubt into your mind. When you come to Christ, it is as it states in Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Therefore, you are saved. You are born again. You are a new creature. It also states in Micah 7.19, that God will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Do not, I repeat, do not go out and buy yourself some scuba gear and jump into the depths of the sea to pull those sins back to the surface. God himself put them there, leave them there. Amen. 1 John 1 9 states that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not some, but all unrighteousness. We must confess our sins. Confession of sin is acknowledging to God that what we did in our actions or words was wrong. If we do this, God will forgive us. Does this mean we keep on sinning because God will forgive us? Romans 6.15 states, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? 
God forbid. That does not mean we will never sin again. It means our goal is to hate sin as much as God does. It means we must turn from our wicked ways. If we mess up, immediately ask God to forgive us and do not do that thing again. Confession of sin should be accompanied by a spirit of humility and a repentant attitude. When we repent, we not only say we are sorry, but we change, transform. Acts 3.19 Repent ye therefore, and be converted, converted, I'm sorry, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Again, repent means to stop what you are doing and change. Converted means having changed in form or character. Therefore, if we are changed, transformed, our sins will be blotted out. And that means made obscure, insignificant, or inconsequential, wiped out destroyed times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord when we are truly in the presence of the lord we feel refreshed rejuvenated recharged revived rested relaxed energized and restored. Amen. When you enter into the presence of the Lord, the world and all its troubles disappear. And there is joy. There is a calmness, an indescribable peace that washes over you. You simply breathe it in, and nothing else matters. Have you been there? If not, allow Christ to come into your heart. Give your life to him, and when you close your eyes and think about him and all he has done, and breathe in, the Holy Spirit envelops you, and you will never be the same. You will be transformed. When you start the old way of thinking, why was I ever born? I have no purpose. God says in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Therefore, Replace, transform that old way of thinking. like Christ is exactly that, a process. He will continue to transform us until the day of Jesus Christ, which speaks of the end times when Jesus returns. It is God's will that each of us is transformed into the image and likeness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Paul is referring to Exodus 34, 29 through 30, and 33 through 35, which describes how the skin of Moses' face would shine after meeting with God. Moses' face so powerfully reflected God's glory 
that he covered it with a veil to protect the Israelites from even the reflection of God's presence with them. Their sin had caused their hearts and minds to be hardened. In that condition, God's glory was unbearable to them. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it speaks of how the devil has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Paul describes that the only way for this separation between sinful humans and God's glory to be removed is not through study or attempts at obedience or even through religiously following the law. God removes this separation between himself and people only when they come to him through faith in Christ. Only in Christ is sin forgiven once and for all. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Only then does God's Holy Spirit act to remove the hardness in their hearts and minds and allows those in Christ to see God's magnificent glory. Paul shows that this moment of spiritual revelation is followed by spiritual transformation. We can now boldly look at Christ, who is the glory of God. We can now see him for who and for what he is. Our spiritual eyes have been opened. This act of seeing, of understanding the nature of Christ begins with a process through which God transforms us, his children, into the image of Christ. Paul writes that this change happens from one degree of glory to another, or from glory to glory. Not only are those in Christ finally free to see God's glory, but they begin to become God's glory as they begin to become like Christ. This is not something we accomplish for ourselves through study or discipline. Paul insists that it is the Spirit of God that makes this happen for those who are in Christ. Okay, I, I wanted to repeat that again. I'm, I'm sure, not sure you heard that. As we are transformed into the image of Christ, we not only can boldly look upon God's glory, Christ himself, but we actually become God's glory as we become more and more like Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. That ye put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Paul calls believers to consciously strive towards a more Christ-like life. A believer is not to be associated with the same sinful practices he or she lived for prior to knowing Christ. Believers are to put off the old man, old self, and allow God to continue to bring about change, transformation. Unbelievers not only give themselves up to sin, they seem eager to go deeper and further into sin. This is not only damaging to their relationship with God, it is damaging to their own lives, their physical bodies, and to those that are closest to them. Sin is deceptive, making us think that what's actual harmful is what's best for us. I'm going to read that again. Sin is deceptive, making us think that what's actual harmful is what's best for us. Believers are instructed to let no corrupting talk leave their mouths. Believers have escaped the corruption, the dishonest conduct, conduct that is in the world and are called to walk in a manner worthy 
of the calling of God. We are to let God's light shine through us that others will want what we have. Making this change is impossible without Christ and requires a Christian to be renewed in their thinking by God, the Holy Spirit. Paul also mentions true righteous and holiness. To live righteously is to conduct one's life in an upright manner with moral standards, have integrity. This reflects our relationship with the Lord. As representatives of the kingdom of God in all that we do, we should mirror his ways. This means in the face of evil, do what is good and what is right. Holiness means to be set apart, clean, and distinct from what surrounds it. Believers are to live holy lives as followers of Christ. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create to make or bring into existence something new. Ask God to create Transform your heart and clean out all the impurities. Renew a right spirit within me to make your spirit new. A transformation of the way you think and live must take place. A right spirit includes things such as love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness. I personally believe that one of the most wonderful transformations in God's creation is the caterpillar into a butterfly. A caterpillar, like a new believer, simply wants to eat. The caterpillar eats every plant in its path, which is similar to the new believer who is eager to eat, take in and learn the word of God. They are at every Bible study, every Sunday school class, every service, every prayer group. The caterpillar and the new believer both eat and grow, one physically and the other spiritually. As the caterpillar grows, it must shed its skin multiple times. As the new believer grows, layers of sin from the past start to fall off. Now, when the caterpillar reaches a certain age, it finds a safe place, and a change begins to take place. The new believer, once reaching a certain level of faith, is often placed in what is referred to as a desert place or a valley. While in this place, which often feels dark and lonely, a transformation begins to take place. However, we are not alone. It is not what it appears to be. God is with us in this place, shaping and molding us into the person we were always meant to be. And when this transformation is complete, we emerge a new creature, and everything old is gone. Amen. Now, as far as I know, there has never been a caterpillar that has ever tried to crawl back into its cocoon or go back to being a caterpillar. He opens his new wings, and he flies. He no longer wants to crawl in the murky places, but wants to float above them. He has been transformed. He is new, and he is living his best life. Once we have been transformed, we can soar. As it is states in Isaiah 40, 31, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We have been changed. Let us open our wings and soar above all that has ever hurt us, above all that has ever been said and done to us, that anything that has made us feel ashamed, above all the lies that the devil speaks to us and, try, and as he tries to clip our wings, as we fly each and every day, we must speak to our renewed mind loudly and boldly, I have been transformed. No turning back, no turning back. One day, there will be a transformation even more glorious than this. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 through 54. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Our dying bodies will be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies will be transformed into immortal bodies. Luke 17, 34 through 36. I tell you on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be ever forever with the Lord. Revelations 21, 4. And God himself shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, and we shall be transformed for all eternity. Praise God.